This is Lenny Winnerstrom, Common Sense Health Expert, and welcome to the Wild and Free Healthy You podcast. Without your health, there isn't much joy in life. We talk about all facets of health, including lots of unconventional strategies, tools, and solutions from a holistic point of view. This podcast is all about inspiration, motivation, and expansion of your mind, your body, and your spirit because your health is your number one asset. I want to make it easier for you to keep it that way. Now, on to the podcast. This podcast does not provide medical advice. The purpose is to promote consumer knowledge and information on various health topics. Always seek the advice of your qualified health practitioner. Welcome to the Wild and Free Healthy You podcast. Our guest today is Dr. Stephanie Seneff. You may know of Dr. Stephanie because uh, for being on Patrick Gentempo's Vaccines Revealed and uh, Ty Bollinger's The Truth About Cancer. She's pretty much everywhere on radio and and everywhere. So she's a pretty amazing person. She is a senior research scientist at the MIT Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Laboratory. She received the BS degree in biophysics in 1968, the MS and EE degrees in electrical engineering in 1980, and the PhD degree in electrical engineering and computer science in 1985, all from MIT. Pretty, uh, pretty amazing there. In recent years, Dr. Seneff has focused her research interests back towards biology. She is concentrating mainly on the relationship between nutrition and health. Since 2011, she has published over two dozen papers in various medical and health-related journals on topics such as modern-day diseases like Alzheimer, autism, cardiovascular diseases, analysis and search of databases of drug side effects using NLP techniques, and the impact of nutritional deficiencies and environmental toxins on human health, mainly environmental toxins like glyphosate. <laughs> good morning, by the way. <laughs> good, mor- good morning. How are you? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm very, very excited about this, but I'm also, the more that I read about glyphosate, I'm also like, um, I try not to be spiritually, I try to rise above it, but um, it's a very earthly thing and we're very earthly here. <laughs> and so yeah, it's uh, a catastrophe. I mean, I think it's an yeah. absolute catastrophe. And Stephanie, you are the person who I consider and almost everybody I know in in the world that I um, surround myself in, you are known as the glyphosate expert for very good reason. And this is this is what you have focused on. For how many years have you focused on it? Actually, only five years, which um, is surprising. A little five and a half, going on five and a half now. But I've been completely obsessed with glyphosate over that period. I didn't even know the word before that, which is quite interesting. I mean, I'm embarrassed to admit. You know, I knew Roundup, of course, and I wasn't paying attention to Roundup because it's safe. You know, it's so safe that we don't worry about it, which is the problem because it is by far the most the biggest contaminant in our environment. There's no question about it, in our food especially. And I think it's in the food where it's really causing a great deal of harm. And it's in the popular foods that the children eat very regularly, like Cheerios and goldfish crackers and Oreo cookies, you know, these things that are very popular among children. They're getting poisoned and they're get really getting uh, in harm's way. Okay, so um, you you say that it's in cereals and, and everything. And so let's let's back up and let's explain um, explain why it's in cereal and why it's in the food. Where, where is it coming from and how is it getting into our food? Right. So first of all, there's the GMO Roundup Ready crops. And this was really a great boon when they figured this out back in the late 1990s. They engineered these crops by inserting in a, a bacterial gene into their genome. And that gene was kind of like Superman. It protected them from glyphosate. Otherwise, glyphosate kills all plants. So something that kills all plants, it's kind of odd to think that it would be harmless to humans to begin with, because many of these herbicides are only kill certain plants, but glyphosate kills everything. And that's a hint. Don't you think that it might be dangerous to us? <laughs> oh, yeah. And, um, and that is, is that the, um, what's the shiitake? What is the name? Shikimate of the- pathway. Shikimate pathway. And this is the argument that Monsanto uses, which is quite effective and very clear. Unfortunately, not true. But the idea is that because our cells don't possess the shikimate pathway, which is true, our cells are not sensitive to glyphosate, you know, and- because that's the pathway that it disrupts. And what is that pathway? Is that, what, is, what is that pathway that is important to the plant that kills the plant? What is it? Yeah, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a biological pathway, very, very important pathway to the plants and also to our gut microbes. And it produces aromatic amino acids. Um, those are uh, building blocks of proteins. And they're also precursors to all kinds of biologically important molecules, such as the neurotransmitters, dopamine, serotonin, melatonin, melanin, the skin tanning agent, oh folate, the, the B vitamin, and um, and other things as well, but uh, 
thyroid hormone, all of those things come from that pathway. And we depend upon our gut microbes and, and our food supply to, uh, to give us those aromatic amino acids that our own cells can't make because they don't have that pathway. So we depend upon um, getting them from our microbes in our gut or from our food. And so, the food, of course, is going to be deficient because of its exposure to glyphosate. Right. So I just want to understand. So our gut microbes have the shikimate pathway. Mm -hmm. And so, we, so basically, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't fly because we have, yes. because we do have this, maybe our bodies don't have it, but our, but our, yeah, well, essentially our, our body yeah. does have it through the microbes. And in fact, our gut microbes, our microbes outnumber our own cells by a factor of 10. Yes. We, in a sense, we are really just a nest, you know, a home for these microbes. You could think yeah. of us as that's our real purpose in life is just to provide a help. Uh, a safe haven for these microbes. Of course, it's not safe anymore because we're being exposed no. to glyphosate right. and they are getting completely disrupted. So what happens is that it kills beneficial bacteria in the gut, particularly bifidobacteria and lactobacillus, which are super, super important. Early in life, they have to settle in and get comfortable and they chase out the pathogens. And that includes, of course, the yeast. So you get yeast overgrowth, you get clostridia overgrowth, you get desulfovibra, all these uh, microbes that are causing trouble in the gut are are flourishing because they're more resistant to glyphosate. The ones that are getting killed are the ones that are uh, performing these useful services for us. So we're, not only are we not getting those nutrients, we're also not, we don't have those microbes and therefore our gut is unhealthy as well. And we get inflammatory gut, we get leaky gut, uh, lots of consequences there. So if we go um, back then to the food, yes. I mean, so, so glyphosate is ubiquitous. It's, it's, I mean, now you can't, you really can't get away from it because um, even, I think even if you're eating, I mean, I know you're a big proponent of organic as am I, um, but even so like it's in our water, right? And so when, yes. you, when you're watering um, and you're, and you're, you're watering the plants, do, do the plants uptake the, yes. They, they do. They, yes. Oh. It's in the rain. A test, a test on the rainwater found it, and I think it was 86% of the rain samples. It's, it's in the organic food because of that. They can't keep it out. They don't use it, but it's just everywhere. Yeah. It's in the soil. It stays in the soil for a very long time in some soils. So Monsanto said that it only lasts for two weeks, which is a lie. In certain soils, it can <laughs> last for years. I know it's, yeah, supposed, it, it, it's, it's supposed to be sprayed on the plants and then like in two weeks. It goes away. Yeah. And when we eat, it's supposed to go straight through our body in two weeks. It's gone. It doesn't get metabolized. Yeah. That's not true either. And Monsanto knows it's not true because there's own studies that have shown it. And I wanted to go back to the food because I didn't quite finish that. The GMO okay. Roundup Ready foods, corn, soy, canola, sugar beets, alfalfa, those are all GMO Roundup Ready. They use it to control the weeds. They can spray the crop all over the place. It won't die, but the crop soaks it up and gets into the food. But the other problem, which might be worse, is the crops that they're spraying with glyphosate just before the harvest. And that includes sugarcane and wheat and barley and oats and the legumes, you know, um, chickpeas and garbanzo beans. Uh, these are things that like hummus, which are foods that I really like, but those are loaded with glyphosate. Cheerios, non-GMO Cheerios, comes from oats. People think I'm buying non-GMO, that's good, but it's bad because they're loaded with glyphosate. They found very high levels of glyphosate in legumes and Cheerios, you know, so you have to be very, very careful. Non-GMO is not good enough. It has to be organic. And even organic, you know, is not good enough. You're better off with organic from Europe yeah. or organic from Mexico rather than organic from the U.S. because the U.S. and Canada are the most contaminated countries in the world. You know, it, 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 this, this makes me, um, besides... I try not to get frightened, I, it, what, like I mentioned um, before we started recording, but um, I mean, because we are spiritual beings, you know, having a human experience, I believe, and, um, but, but we are human and this is affecting us. And there's so many people in, in the world and, and just think in the United States um, that they can't afford organic. And it's not that that's like a whole lot more expensive, but they can, they can barely afford I, mean, I know just the processed foods and so like it's it's our it's it's our future it's our children it's the i mean their 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 brains are being impacted i mean for so from so many they're being blasted from so many areas um i mean from from the vaccines to to the glyphosates to fluoride in the water and and not to get off track but i mean it's just like how how does like how do we even like attempt to um I mean, this is like really far-fetched, but I, it's like we just have to, to spread the word. And this is, this is why I'm so grateful that you have made time um, mm -hmm. 
to speak, you know, speak with me and with, you know, with my listeners and, and, and viewers and everybody around the world, all that you put out and all your time and, and efforts, because it's, um, it's very difficult. This is a, like, we've gotten ourselves into a humongous mess. I agree. I am absolutely terrified of the future. And we have one in 36 autism now. It's been going up exponentially for the past two decades. My projections show uh, one in two by 2032. That'll be 80% of the boys born will end up on the autism spectrum. It's an absolutely terrifying number. Oh, and uh, the government just says, oh, we're diagnosing it more. It's not a problem. I mean, I don't understand how they can say that in, with a straight face. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. It just totally baffles me as yeah. to what is going on. We live in a very, very strange time. And we're going to look back on this phase in history in absolute disbelief. We're just going to not understand. The future generations are not going to understand how we got to where we are today. They will, they will be so baffled by our ignorance. In the, in, and in, in plain sight, we see everything that's going on and we deny it. It's yeah, incredible like, to me, really incredible. I know it's like Alice in Wonderland. It's, um, and everything it is. is upside down and, and backwards. And, and you see the truth and you know the truth, but yet you see um, our, our, our leaders um, espousing like lies and exactly and it's backwards it's like you know red is black and you know it's 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 just it's crazy. 1984 i don't know if you've read that book but it really is 1984 the book 1984 oh. which was written in the 1950s it's <laughs> That's come so along funny. a little later than they expected but here it is for sure you know black yeah. is white yeah um, it's amazing yeah, and, and that was supposed to happen in 1984, but but it's it's happening now, and it's going to be even worse. Like what, 2036, 2032? Like you're, I mean, it's just getting it's just it's going to be horrendous. I mean, at some point, people will get sick enough that they're going to say, "Hey, I got to figure out what's going on here." And people are more and more people are waking yeah. up every day. This is what I'm trying to do: is to wake them up. Uh, the best any individual listening to this can do is to go organic and to tell all your friends and your and your family to go organic. Buy yeah. organic food because that will pressure the farmers to switch to organic and they will thank you for that because it will keep them safe. There's a brand new paper out by the way from Argentina. Uh, I'm so glad to see that paper. I've been aware for some time now that the, the little villages in Argentina that are surrounded by the GMO Roundup Ready soy, mm -hmm. the people there are getting really sick. A lot of cancer, they've got a lot of miscarriages, they've got a lot of defects, birth defects, lots of stuff happening. And, um, and there's rumors you know, that glyphosate is causing it, but this paper really nails it because they looked at all kinds, they measured arsenic, they measured all the other toxic chemicals that are used in, our, in um, agriculture, in the school playground, you know, around the town, high levels of glyphosate and nothing else. It really, glyphosate stood out as by, which I expect is by far the biggest contaminant that they're exposed to. And then they showed statistically significant results that they're getting this very high miscarriage rate and very high deformities among the children that are being born, you know. Well, and they the can't blame anything but glyphosate for that. And yeah, this is farmers. why you could say glyphosate is not non-toxic to humans, which is what we're trying to believe. Yeah. It's a lot. So now I heard your, um, an interview you had um, with uh, Patrick Timponi mm -hmm. on the radio network, and you were really going into um, mm -hmm. the Monsanto's um, research and, yes. or study. And, yes. and I, I just, I, played it and played it and really wanted to understand it. And, and I started getting it and, mm -hmm. and I'd like for you to explain it because there's no way that I can explain it, but I mean that the protein mm -hmm. that is sticking to our proteins inside of us or, or potentially, mm -hmm. right? Cause it yes, did. Potentially. Yes. Yeah. So um, would right. you, would you explain that for the audience? This is, yeah. This is the thing that really keeps me awake at night because uh, Anthony uh, told me uh, two years ago in December. This, this is your partner, correct? Anthony Samson. And he and I have written six papers together. We're working on number seven right now, which is a real challenge. We've got so much material. We're trying to figure out what to put in, what to take out. It's going to be uh, rich, but we're, we're, we're taking our time with glyphosate seven. He's finding all kinds of new con contamination in interesting places, I should say. Ugh. But that's going to come out eventually, I hope hope if someone will publish it. Um, but he said two years ago, December, he called me up. He said, you know, I think life is getting into proteins by mistake in place of glycine. And at first I said, oh, Anthony, get out. That can't be, that can't be happening. That's just, that's just not possible. That was my first reaction. And that's a lot of people's first reaction, by the way. They say, no, it's impossible. It can't happen. Can I ask you, can I ask you why just trying to understand, isn't glycine like a, if I understand how you explained it, glycine is part of glyphosate? 
Glycine is an amino acid. It's one of the coding amino acids, just like the aromatic amino acids that are disrupted by glyphosate. Those are also uh, amino acids. There's about 20 amino acids uh, that are coding. They're called coding amino acids, Mm C-O-D-I-N-G. And I'm sure you've heard of the DNA code, Mm -hmm. you know, the four letter code and three letters out of four in different sequences code for specific amino acids. So you have this, the sequences of A, G, C, T, and they go along and you read them off three at a time. And those three are like, a, it's like a, a name for gly, glycine, right? So there's a, you know, GGC says glycine. So when you see that pattern in the, in the uh, uh, DNA, okay. uh, there's, there's a, uh, an enzyme that says, oh, oh, I need glycine. And it'll grab a glycine molecule and put it there. And okay. then it chains them like paper dolls together. All these amino acids, oh. they get chained together like paper dolls. It's really cool, actually. The body makes all these proteins that have all these interesting things they can do that are really amazing. Enzymes and transporters and, and signaling uh, receptors, all kinds of things. Uh, and structural you're a little proteins. above my head, but I'm, but I'm, I'm, I'm going with you here. Yeah, the proteins are really the workhorses of the body, mm-hmm. and they're coded for by the DNA, which is the code that makes us human. Okay. And, and then the proteins are assembled as beads on a string, all these amino acids. And glycine is a super, super important amino acid. It's the smallest one, doesn't have any side chains. It's very, very trim and very tiny. Okay. And glyphosate is a complete glycine molecule, a complete one, except it's missing one hydrogen atom. And instead of that hydrogen atom, it has something else there. It's called a methylphosphonyl group that's attached to its nitrogen atom. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an augmented glycine, you, you could say. You know, it's sort of a glycine on steroids. And this thing that's added to it makes it very interesting. It causes a lot of interesting changes to the way it behaves. It has a negative charge. It has this phosphonate, you know, group, which is going to make it much more reactive. It has a lot of interesting effects that are caused by putting that thing on the nitrogen atom. So it's hairy. Yeah, yeah. It's really uh, disruptive. It's very disruptive. And glycine turns out to be really important in molecules to help them fold properly. One of the things I'm seeing um, the, there's a protein called uh, am, uh, amyloid precursor protein, APP, which goes into the membrane of neurons. It, it goes through the membrane. It's called a transmembrane protein. And it has um, a sequence of four glycines that are spaced apart very evenly with mm-hmm. other things in between mm-hmm. that are highly conserved in that molecule and that are essential for it to form this. this it forms a spiral. It shapes like a spiral and it's sort of like a screw that can go into the membrane, you could yeah. say. Yes. And that all works out because of those glycines. Yes. If you swap out for those glycines something that's bulkier and negatively charged, it won't do that anymore. It'll totally mess it up. And instead, it goes out on a straight line. It kind of it pulls the, the coil out and make it straight. Yes. And then it allows water to gain access and it becomes water soluble. And it, it hangs out in the actual interior of the cell, sort of dissolved in water, you could say. And those, that's the toxic form of amyloid beta that causes Alzheimer's disease. So basically, those two, those two glycine molecules that are kind of balancing, what is it balancing in between or keeping together? What is it holding in? What do you call them? Well, what happens is there's a coil. In, particular, in, in this particular situation of this one protein, right. there's a coil, and, and the glycines hook up and attach, sort of like, like putting the buttons on right. to hold it together. Yeah. And so when you start throwing extra junk in there, they can't, the buttons won't fit anymore. And so right. it's out. And it won't go into the membrane. And like puzzle pieces. So they no, it no longer fits. No, it no longer fits. It, it, it holds it securely in place in the way it wants to be with that coil. Yeah. And if, you, if you swap out those glycines and put something else there, it won't do that anymore. It'll mess it up. And this is what glyphosate's doing, I think. It's getting into those proteins by mistake. Because when the DNA code is looking for glycine, it finds glycine. Oh, here's a glycine. Let's put that in there. It doesn't notice there's some extra stuff there. It ignores it. And then it ends up in the actual protein. And that causes the protein to misbehave. And so what I've been doing is, since Anthony suggested that, I started looking for proteins that have essential glycine. So proteins, you know, are very careless when they're being made. Lots of mm-hmm. mistakes are made. DNA is much more careful when it copies itself to be okay. accurate. Okay. Proteins are kind of like sloppy. They're like sloppy workmen, you know. And they make mistakes. (laughs) They make a lot of mistakes. And usually, often, those mistakes are fine. They could even swap in glycine for alanine, for example. Just, oh, make a mistake. That's all right. We'll just put glycine. You know, they make these mistakes. And and alanine, uh, this is what I didn't understand. What is alanine? Alanine is another amino acid, and it's actually the next smallest one compared to glycine. It's the one that's closest to glycine. It has an extra methyl group. Um, Glyphosate has the methylphosphonyl group, which is a bulkier thing. 
but the uh, glycine and alanine get confused with each other. You know, so the, it's just the whole machinery is quite errorful. In fact, there's various diseases um, that we know about that are often neurological diseases that are known to be caused by non-coding amino acid analogs, they're called. These are uh, amino acids that are produced naturally by certain plants or, or microbes uh, in order to fend off uh, their, their, their enemies, you know. And so, for example, sugar beets can produce a, an amino acid called AZE. And I, I said it in, I can't remember the long name for it, but AZE is its nickname. Uh huh. And it's an amino acid analog of proline. Proline is another one of those 20 amino acids. Okay, yes. When it goes in instead of proline, it causes multiple sclerosis. So, oh, you know, gosh. this whole process is known to occur. Okay. It's naturally produced amino acid analogs. Okay, so, so um, getting back to Monsanto's, then the study, just to put it all together, because it's we've yes. gotten, like, you know, up here. Um, yes scientifically so um so how does how does their what they what they did with the proteins like what they they actually took out the proteins right or something i'll tell you what they did i'll tell you what they did and let's see if people can understand i know this science is a little bit tricky but i'm trying to explain it at a level people can understand and you're doing a really good job very interesting study that they did and this was in 1989 i should say anthony uh pestered the epa to get these studies and monsanto had a whole bunch of unpublished studies that they had done on glyphosate and uh, anthony kept uh, harassing the epa to, through the freedom of information act and the epa finally let him have this huge huge stack of stuff um and he had to sign something that would say he would not show them to anybody but he could talk about them so we wrote about this 1989 study in one of our published papers. Uh, really fascinating study and, and really quite um, remarkable in the respect to what's happening now because it was bluegill sunfish that they were using as the animal model, bluegill sunfish. Mm -hmm. And they exposed them to radio labeled glyphosate. So this is pretty cool what you can do. And people do this in, in these toxicology studies. You can substitute for one of the atoms. You can substitute a different form of that atom that actually emits a radioactive signal. It's kind of like uranium, right? But you, there is this carbon-14 that you can put in instead of the carbon atom uh -huh. molecule yeah. mm -hmm. that basically tags it. So they have this you special- can, Yeah, you can follow it. Yeah, a special form of glyphosate that kind of lights up, you could say, right? Mm -hmm. And they fed this to these, um, to these sunfish. Uh, and then they looked in the tissues to see if there was any radio. So their question was, is glyphosate accumulating in the tissues? Now they tell us it doesn't accumulate, right? That's what they say. It goes through 14 days, it's gone, all of it's gone. It's right. not true and they know it's not true because they found it in these tissues, in these sunfish. And they found this radio label. And then they said, okay, it is in the tissues. Let's see if it's still glyphosate because maybe it got metabolized or something, right? Maybe it turned into something else. Right. Let's see if it's still glyphosate. So they tested for glyphosate. And what they're testing for is an individual isolated glyphosate molecule. Mm -hmm. If the glyphosate's tied up in something else, they won't see it. The, met the method that's used to test it depends upon it being an independent molecule. This is important. So they tested it and they only found up to, up to 20% of the radio label. 80% of the radio label they could not see. Can I ask, no. you, there's a bunch of noise going on behind you or something. Oh, I wonder if I'm hitting something. Are we yeah. okay now? Yeah, that's I'm, better. That's okay, better. let me not touch anything. <laughs> okay, so they, they, um, they, they tested for radio label. They found radio label in the tissues. They tested uh, those same tissues for glyphosate. They found only 20% of the radio label. 80% of the radio label was unaccounted for. Are we clear right now? Yes, no, yes. No, so, yeah, they okay. could, so they didn't find, they, how many, they had 20%, 18%? Yeah, 18 to 20 percent they found, and 20 to uh, you know, so, so 80 percent missing. 80 percent missing. Yeah. yeah, so they're like, okay, what is this, right? So, a science, a good, good scientist wants to understand. Exactly. So they got the brilliant idea of adding digestive enzymes. Basically, these are proteolysis enzymes. Prote proteinase K is what's what it's called. It's a well-known enzyme that you can use to break proteins apart. You know, you have those beads on a string. Mm -hmm. You break them apart into the individual beads, which is what yeah. you need to do in order to see the glyphosate. Mm -hmm. So they added this stuff and they, and they broke it apart and then they tested again and they got up to 70%, but still had 30% missing, but they got from 20 up to 70. So they recovered a lot more of the glyphosate. There's still a lot missing. Right. But so they covered a lot more. And so they even said in the paper, they said that it was either binding to, or it was quote unquote incorporated into the protein. This is very important because they said, they used that expression incorporated into the protein, which can only mean what we're saying is that it's getting into proteins by mistake in place of glycine. So these are Monsanto researchers who said this, you know, and, and in this, 1989. 
this is many years ago. Exactly. And this is what is what you were talking about in the brain when it gets yes. glycine molecules. I mean, the, the glycine. In the amyloid plaque, you're going to get Alzheimer's disease. And Alzheimer's is going up exactly like autism, exactly in step with the rise in glyphosate usage on core crops. It's all perfect match. Autism, Alzheimer's, and glyphosate usage on corn and soy are all perfect match when you look over time at the increases. All of them are going up exponentially. Alzheimer's is going to be a huge problem in the future, and so is autism. Both of them are just going to derail our society with a burden that we have in taking care of these people. It already It's going to be a mess. I mean, it already is, but it's going to be much worse. We're looking to a very grim future, I think. That's yeah. my prediction. Yeah. Um, and, and the thing is, so there's still 30% missing. That's because it's stubborn. Once glyphosate's in the protein, it becomes difficult to break down. So it's still hanging around with extra peptides. It's a peptide. You know, it's still stuck to other amino acids. It's not totally separated. And, and we're so seeing allergies to things. Like there's a proline glycine proline sequence that gets uh, that's in a collagen. Collagen is the uh, the protein that's the highest. 25% uh, of the proteins in our body are collagen molecules. And collagen, 25% of the amino acids in collagen are glycine residues. So collagen has a tremendous opportunity oh. to get glyphosate. Oh my gosh. Tremendous opportunity. Yeah. And that gives you, you know, all the joint pain, bone pain, skin disorders, because collagen is basically the, the, the tissue of your body, you know, the well, connective people, tissue. Yeah. And if people are worried about, you know, anti-aging and all this kind of stuff, I mean, pay attention because I mean, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, like, that's just such a superficial part of it. But I mean, it, it's, I mean, beauty yes. and health and all that stuff starts from the inside out. And and if you've got you, if you have this glyphosate going in and messing up the glycine, you know, taking over where the glycine molecules go, um, we're in trouble. We are, and the collagen, of course, the collagen has a, a triple helix structure, very beautiful, that it creates, and it depends upon glycine every third residue. So it's glycine XY, glycine XY, glycine XY. The sequence has every third amino acid is a glycine in the portion of the collagen molecule that makes this triple helix that's so important for the gall for collagen's properties, tensile strength, flexibility, ability to hold water, all of those things depend upon that triple helix that's gonna get messed up if glyphosate goes in for those glycines. So we're gonna have, and I think that's why we have an epidemic in opioid drug uh, overdoses, because people are in such pain, they get back pain, you know, and shoulder pain and knee pain, all these different joint pain problems that people are having. Uh, I think is a, a large part of it is due to glyphosate getting into the collagen, I suspect. You know, it's a theory. It's a yeah, theory. I think it's a good one because um, you talked about the prote protease K. Is it? Prote what is it? Yeah, protease, protease K. Yes. Yeah, but I mean that isn't. It? I mean, just getting um, there's a actually there's actually one on Amazon that I ordered. It's, it is protease, and it really helps. Yes. Um, with with arthritis and other things. Um, I mean, it just, it helps, it obviously it breaks down the proteins, right? So yes. Maybe yeah, well, in fact, we have a huge issue in our digestive system because of disruption of the digestive enzymes by glyphosate. And this is Anthony and I have already written about this in one of our published papers. He tested, he just ordered from a lab, he ordered uh, porcine, which is from pigs, trypsin, uh, pep, uh, trypsin, pepsin, and lipase. Trypsin and pepsin digest proteins and lipase digests fats. Mm -hmm. and these are all produced by the pancreas. Right. And they're essential in the gut for breaking down your food to turn it into nutrients that you can use. Right. And all three of them tested for glyphosate contamination, high levels. Oh, my gosh. So when people order trepsin, if they're taking uh, enzymes, digestive enzymes, which people are doing because their digestive system is not working, they're taking glyphosate when they do that. Wow. Oh, my God. It, now, you're, I mean, that's not a blanket that all digestive enzymes have this. Or that is a blanket statement. I think that all the digestive enzymes are being disrupted by glyphosate, and this is also why the proteins are not being digested, which is why we get these autoimmune diseases from um, uh, antibody responses to undigested proteins. Things like celiac disease and gluten intolerance, casein intolerance, peanut allergy, all of these food allergies um, and all of these um, sensitivities to various um, proteins that are in foods are due to the fact that they're not getting broken down because the enzymes are broken by glyphosate. So when I'm when I'm suggesting to suggesting to my clients that they um, get digestive enzymes, I'm giving them. I'm giving yeah, they should source them from you know grass-fed beef. I mean, try to get extremely high quality. 
yeah. um, digestive enzymes. You have to really worry about your drugs. I think that nutrients, oh, yes. the, all of the um, nutritional supplements, I think many of them are probably contaminated with glyphosate. I don't know for sure because it, not, not much has been measured. I wish that the government would spend money and measure some of these things because yeah, right. I think you'd find it in all kinds of things. They have found it in tampons. I think you know that the uh, oh. South America did a study and found glyphosate in tampons, which is, I mean, so organic tampons is what you need and you can get those. Yeah, uh, I mean, you should because you could end up with some serious reproductive system oh. problems if you're exposing certain parts of your body to glyphosate. Well, yeah. besides, um, besides the BT toxin, and I mean, in, in the cotton, and that's right. I mean, I mean, it's just it's 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 a super toxic world, and to navigate it, it's it's like you're walking on. It's like you just you just need to be knowledgeable um, of of like what to do, and and going organic is almost always, I I think, um, um, maybe with the exception of. I'm not about, or well, I was thinking about toilet paper, but um, it's it's almost always the best way to go um, in order. Absolutely, to and I think you have to yeah. afford it. I think even if you're poor, you really have to afford it because if you start getting a child with autism or a parent without Alzheimer's, or if you become uh, sick, it's going to cost you a lot more money than it costs for the organic food. And oh, yeah. um, and you know you can. Um, I think there are way uh, growing your own food is really an option, and I think a lot of people need to think about that. If they've got a bit of backyard where they can plant some some food, they should. Or if they can do something even in pots in, in, in the yeah. city, on the porch, on, on on the deck, you know, I think you really need to think about that. And, and to, try uh, to cover it too because of victory the, gardens, you know, <laughs> grow your own food because the um, uh, it's it's yeah, dangerous. It's, the food is dangerous. Yeah, I know, and and we're we're ingesting that, and and then we're breathing in the air, and and all of those things. Um, it's. Uh, I, getting back to Monsanto's uh, that that study, then so they they knew since 1989 about this because you're you're finding it out now, and there's, it's a theory. It's not. I've got that. Yes, theory. it's I've a theory, that. and of course, there's enormous pushback. I am getting enormous pushback, which That's, is interesting to me. It really makes me think I'm right because they would ignore me. You know, they wouldn't be so serious about trying to shut me down if they didn't know that. I believe that their thinking is if this gets out it's game over for glyphosate. So we cannot let this get out. I think that's their logic. And, and, and so they're gonna just make sure everybody believes that it's not possible. I, that's what I think is happening. And MIT is, is cool with you talking about this. Amazingly, they haven't shut me down yet. I keep expecting someone. I look her over my shoulder all the time, but they've been really great. They have not stopped me. Good for them, right? Oh yeah. I mean, they don't that, get funding from Monsanto, so that helps. Oh yeah. I but mean, they get a lot of funding from pharma. So and pharma's Monsanto, I think, is somehow a subsidiary of pharma. So it's okay, all connected girl. together. The big chemical industry monster. Yeah. If, if you if if you haven't, I'm sure you've seen the movie Bot. In fact, were you in the movie? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in Bot. Was I, I, I think. I, I think so. I can't even remember. It's, it's a big circle. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, so okay, before we go into detoxifying, I just want to I want to talk about um, like the diseases that um, we we talked to like diabetes when we just touch on like all these things like all the gastrointestinal the digestive issues that we're having. I mean, just just like rattle off the, these diseases that people are are um, that are tied to glyphosate um, because of the this um, well because of what it's doing in our in our in our gut health to our microbes. Right. Right. I mean, the liver and the and the kidneys are hit hard by glyphosate. That's been shown in mouse studies very clearly. Um, the sugarcane workers in C Central America, I think, are being poisoned by glyphosate. Of course, they're spraying it before the harvest, and then the, when they harvest, they get uh, harmed by the glyphosate that's in the cane. And let's explain um, that. Let's explain what what they're doing and why we're getting like in the food. What because it's not just GMO GMO um, round. Right. This is what is interesting. It's this not is just GMO. So non GMO is not good enough. That's something people don't realize. They think if they're right. buying non GMO, they're good, and that's not true. Yeah. Um, Sugarcane is not a GMO uh, food, uh, but it uh, but they use they're increasingly using and this is wheat too. Of course, wheat is being sprayed before the harvest, and that it's showing up in the wheat. Um, in wheat products, which is why I think we have an epidemic in gluten intolerance. And it's worse um, than Roundup Ready crops because it's because it's sprayed right before, before harvest. Before. It goes right into the seed, so and, the, and the direct shot of it. Yeah, and the healthy breads are actually not healthy because they have more glyphosate than the white bread. You know, the wheat germ is where it goes; it ends up concentrated in the germ. So the the whole wheat bread has more glyphosate than the white bread. 
which is ridiculous because that's the healthy bread, you know, yeah. just going into the things that are healthy. And liver is actually a very healthy food, but it's so loaded with toxins that you can't eat it anymore. It has lots and lots of nutrients, Unless but it gathers the toxic toxins and uh, glyphosate goes into the liver. Unless grass fed. The- Right. Grass-fed beef, grass-fed yeah. beef, yes. Yeah. And I, I like uh, chicken livers, organic chicken livers. I can, we can buy them in Boston, and I, I like those a lot, organic chicken livers. Uh, very healthy food. And, and so can I just go kind of rattle off the list of these um, sprayed foods that are desiccated? Because um, I wrote a book um, in 2014, and I and I went over like these, these um, I mean, it's oats, it's um, non-GMO canola, lentils, um, non-GMO soybeans, any dry beans, flax, peas. I mean, it's, it's so wheat and sugar cane, you mentioned those things. I mean, when people go, they, they go for their um, garbanzo or. Um, yes, I know. What you talked about. And you, and you say you like hummus and yeah. I mean, garbanzo and um, chickpeas, same thing. Mm-hmm. But, um, but I mean, people need to understand that when they're, when they're going from, when they're changing their diet to go, you know, from, okay, gluten is this big, the, the big enemy, which I'm agreeing with you because you've, you've mentioned it in several places that it's like, is it really the wheat or is it the, yes. and I'm like on board with you. I, I think maybe the ancient wheat's a better way to go just because of the, what we've done with the, right. The, right. Have, it has been modified. Yeah. yeah it, well, yeah, it's been modified, but not genetically, but, um, well, I guess genetically, yes, but <laughs> <laughs> no, I know what you're saying. It's not inserting a in bacterial gene, but it's right. evolving the wheat into something different. Yeah, and, yeah. and, and we, it's hard to sort out, you know, yeah exactly what in the wheat is making it allergenic. I would guess that the glyphosate is by far the biggest factor. That would be my guess, especially yeah. if it's getting into proteins because that's, it's messing up the wheat by virtue of being integrated into the wheat protein. And that's why I wanted to talk to you about that study from Monsanto study from 1989 and, and get it's it. It's amazing, out. isn't it? I was so stunned when I saw that incorporated yeah. into the protein. They wrote that in 1989 and they say it's impossible. They say it can't happen. They now. wrote it and now they're saying it can't happen. And, mm-hmm. and um, It's yeah, a complete disconnect. The, it's like, it's like. <laughs> at least your partner has the information. Cognitive dissonance, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's Alice Wonderland. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, um, so it's, it's. Um, it's found in all of our foods then because like it, even like people who um, beer probably wine because it's in the water um if, if it's a especially a wheat beer uh, it's in cereals it's mm-hmm. in um and we we kind of talk pet food cow's milk high levels in pet food uh, anthony has tested it in pet food mm-hmm. yeah oh we reported on that in one of our papers because they just throw crap in there and they put the husks in there speaking of um corn husks have you heard this i i've i heard this from a farmer a long time ago, but um, not a long time ago, I, um, from a farmer's market a couple of years ago, and I haven't been able to verify it. Um, but he said that the corn husks from GMO, uh, GMO corn don't even, they have to burn them because they, they don't biodegrade any longer. Have you? That's heard? interesting. I did not know that. And that makes sense because if they're loaded up with glyphosate, they're going to be hard to break down. Yeah, that's so, very, very interesting. I should research that. I, 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 so they I did not it. know that. Then and you're telling me something there. new. Something new, you, Stephanie? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I didn't know that. But it totally makes sense. I mean, because I, I feel that glyphosate is making the proteins hard to break down. Plus, it's also disrupting the digestive enzymes. So you're getting it from both sides. So, so, what it, so this is why I, I, was, I really wanted to ask you about that. Because so then what is it doing when, uh, what is it doing to our proteins inside of us? Exactly. That, you know what I mean? Exactly. So when it gets into our proteins, they become allergenic. They become monster versions of themselves. They misfold. And then the immune cells say, hey, what's this? This is not normal. And they develop, you develop antibodies to your own tissues. And that's how you get all these autoimmune diseases, which are totally an epidemic as well. We have so many issues. People are, you know, lupus and multiple sclerosis and, um, and even autism and Alzheimer's are really, I suspect, autoimmune diseases. You know, there's a immune system attacking your own proteins because they are messed up they're not folding correctly they're not being able to be broken down and so you develop an antibody response that's just uh, normal physiology well um now on that uh non-scary note let it let's talk about how we can um besides just going organic what what else can can um people do to detoxify um, besides avoiding how to, to, to detoxify our bodies the, the best way that we can, what are your suggestions? Probiotics, you know, because your gut microbes are going to be disturbed and you need to get your gut straightened out. The very first thing to get back to good health is to straighten out your gut. And once your 
gut is healthy, then a lot of other things will follow. Your brain, you'll get, you'll get rid of your brain fog and whatever, or your rheumatoid arthritis, all these other issues that you might have will start to disappear if you can fix up your gut. So that's crucial. And probiotics is, is one way. I like to eat a lot of probiotic foods. Um, apple cider vinegar, I highly recommend. Bragg's Organic is what mm -hmm. we use. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It's really super because it has acetobacter in it. And acetobacter is among the very few microbes that can actually fully metabolize glyphosate. There are very few microbes that know how to break that CP bond. That's an unusual bond in biology. That, that, acetobacter is one of the ones that can do it. That was really exciting when I, when I heard you say that, I was like, oh my gosh, like that is like, so it's, and, and I think you mentioned like have that, have the salad dressing and this again, you said is a theory, but yes, but potentially like take your, take your vinegar or your, your salad yes. dressing and, um, and, and is it a problem to be mixed with fat? The no, no, not at all. And so we, we make our own, um, <laughs> salad dressing completely organic and we yeah. use, um, you know, healthy oils, organic oil, like um, olive oil and, um, and this uh, apple cider vinegar. And then um, we actually put an egg yolk in there. We make a kind of a Caesar salad kind of yeah. dressing. And, mm -hmm. um, and we like to have this salad before dinner as yeah. often as possible. Get um, the glyphosate. With romaine lettuce. It's, it's very easy. I mean, my husband is a cook in my family, so I shouldn't say it's very easy, but he does a great <laughs> it's job. It's very easy for you. <laughs> yes, it's great for me. And he makes a, a pot of, um, of, of bone broth. Uh, almost every weekend he makes a big pot of bone broth um, using um, either organic chicken bones or he is a, he buys these uh, big beef bones that you can get uh, grass-fed beef mm -hmm. so healthy bones put them in the in the water add a little vinegar because that'll help to pull the nutrients out of the bones cook it on low heat for a long time and then you can have that every every day with dinner as well so our dinners are often punctuated by the salad and the soup does it the the, after stay in the vinegar through cooking uh, you don't cook it. The, the vinegar, oh, the vinegar, no, the vinegar that you're cooking, I don't know what happens to the acetobacter. They oh, make it. They I may just, die. Just, they may die, but, but, they, but the vinegar helps to bring out the nutrients from the bones. No, I understand that. But I, I just yeah. thought, well, maybe it's still in the, the bone broth. Right, so. right. That's another use for the vinegar. To pull <laughs> the <laughs> yeah, that's really good. Um, I wanted to ask you about sweating. Like, um, our skin is our largest organ, and so, mm -hmm. so maybe infrared saunas and... and I think so. I mean, I really like, um, I like to use Epsom salts in a very hot bath, so to make it as hot as you can stand. So it's sort of like a hot spring. Uh, uh, so far, hot spring, which I do when I can. I, in Taiwan, I, I, I spend some time in Taiwan, and they have wonderful sulfur hot springs there, which I, which I like. And there are some, I think, here in this country in select places. Um, but well, those, Stephanie, those that's are great. Just, that's just being spoiled there, going to Taiwan. <laughs> and <hot> and that <laughs> would be a little hard to pull off for most people. But, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but you can just throw some Epsom salts into the bath water, make it as hot as you can. I even boil water to add to the bath water. Is and it? I do that pretty much every night. I don't put the sulfur in every night, but I make the really hot water because that's the sort of um, heat. Uh, infrared heat is really good uh, yes. for helping your body to make sulfate is what I believe. Yes. And sulfate, I haven't, we haven't gotten into that, but sulfate is super, super important. And it's glyphosate is a train wreck for sulfate. And so we have a lot of problems with sulfate deficiency, which uh, disrupts both the circulation of our blood and also our immune system. So both of them will get disrupted by insufficient sulfate. And I think many of the diseases that we're suffering from um, reflect a uh, body's attempt to produce sulfate and deliver it to the blood in order to rescue um, those uh, in really, really important um, aspects of our physiology, the, the immune system and the circulation. Those two are super, super important. Otherwise, oh, yeah. we can't live. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, um, so, so different organs will sacrifice themselves, including the brain. You know, you get Alzheimer's, the brain is really sacrificing itself for the sake of the body and freeing up a lot of sulfate um, because of that. So when the brain becomes sulfate deficient, it can't work properly as a brain. But meanwhile, you've supplied the sulfate to the blood so that it's still circulating and you're not dying. So can we take, um, like I take organic sulfur every single day, two times a day, a teaspoon, mm -hmm. about a teaspoon, maybe, maybe mm -hmm. sometimes more if I'm not feeling good. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and um, do you, do you have a source for that? That is, um, what do you do? You just do Epsom salts and soak in that, or do you? I only do Epsom salts. However, my my husband takes MSM every day. Uh, he yeah. takes a combo of uh, glucosamine sulfate, and chondroitin sulfate, and MSM methyl sulfonylmethane, all three. Right. right. And right. he takes that every day. I, I tend to be um, 
a reluctant participant in, self, in, uh, <laughs> in supplements because I, I worry about glyphosate contamination. I worry about processing. I try to, I like to do everything from foods. So yeah. I'm a little bit more um, dragging behind on that. But my husband believes in supplements much more than I do. So he takes that yeah. every day. And, and, so uh, and he's been doing it for years, actually, and it's been fine. He hasn't had any issues with it. So I think it's probably a healthy thing to do. The, the sulfur cycle, um, that, that is like, that is a, um, a critical, in that a, a critical part of like, like one of our um, pathways or something that is, I mean, I, I was, I don't know, I was reading something about it and it's just like one of the, like the top four or five or something pathways for it, like, I mean, oxygenation, right? The circulatory system, the, I mean, uh, just what you said, the, the blood. And, yeah. and so basically, is, is it a blood, uh, also a blood purifier as well? And um, or Sulfur my... is super important, and people don't uh, realize that. It's not emphasized enough, I think, in health. It's sort of overlooked, um, partly because it's so common. People sort of think, they don't think of a deficiency of sulfate. Most people don't think that that's possible even. Or supposed uh, to be common. Well, it is very uh, common, and it's some things that are so, like oxygen, you know, it's so common that you don't think of it as possibly being deficient, but just because it's common doesn't mean it's, you know, we have a lot of it. It doesn't mean we can't be deficient. Because it's it. stripped from our soil. I mean, it's not even... Yeah, it's, absolutely, and glyphosate prevents it from going up into the plants. That's been shown by Don Huber, that the plants are deficient in sulfur when they're exposed to glyphosate, so it's deficient in our diet, and we're wow. losing it from yeah, the soil. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but sulfur is really interesting, because that, actually, people believe it might have been the preceded oxygen in life. In other words, the very earliest life forms could have been sulfur-based. And hemoglobin itself looks like that it was originally designed to carry sulfur, not oxygen. And then it got adapted to oxygen once the atmosphere became, um, oxygen became available in the atmosphere. So when you look back ancient, you know, history, you find, you go back to sulfur. And, and I think sulfur was really, more than oxygen was what allowed life to start. So mm -hmm. in the beginning, you had ox you know, sulfur-based life rather than oxygen-based. Sulfur is in the same uh, column of the periodic table as oxygen. It's right below oxygen in the, in the chemistry periodic table. Mm -hmm. yes. So it has some of the properties of oxygen. But it has more than oxygen has because it actually can go to six different levels, oxidation levels. It can go from minus two uh, to plus, uh, let's see, minus two to plus four, I guess it is. Or plus, yeah, I think so, minus two to plus four. Uh, something like that. Sulfur has a, a lot of different oxidation states, which allows it to um, to be interesting, used in interesting ways in chemical reactions. And I think the body um, actually has a cycle. And this is um, sort of, I'm surprised I haven't really seen this said specifically in any particular paper, but it makes tremendous sense to me that sulfur actually carries oxygen in the blood. It's a way to carry oxygen. So when you take hydrogen sulfide gas, that's just H2S, and you can oxidize it to sulfate, SO4 minus two. So you've got the charge and you've also got four oxygens. The sulfur atom is carrying four oxygens in a safe form. Mm -hmm. It's not very reactive. And um, so this is a way of transporting oxygen because oxygen is very reactive. And okay. And, yeah, it can be unsafe. That's why you have hemoglobin in the red blood cells to capture the oxygen, to carry it, to deliver it. Interesting. It has to be carefully managed uh, okay. or else it can cause trouble. And, and you have a a lot of the damage that you see, oxidative damage, you hear about oxidative damage, yes, yes, inflammation, rust. that's oxygen that's doing that. So you have to be very careful about yes. oxygen. Sulfur allows you to transport oxygen in a safe way. Oh my God, and then, yeah. that's really yeah. interesting. And then the sulfur, the sulfate actually gets attached to the, um, to the extracellular matrix, which is sort of the materials that are outside the cell. Mm -hmm. It gets attached there as sulfate. And um, if there's too little there, then lots of bad things happen. But that sulfate that's in the extracellular matrix can be uh, chipped off and taken up by the cell along with nutrients into, and it, it pulls it into the lysosome. The lysosome is sort of the digestive um, system of the cell. Okay. And the lysosome uses that sulfate uh, to make sulfuric acid, which is very acidic, just like hydrochloric acid in the stomach. Okay. It, yes. can, help to break, it, it can help to break down these uh, molecules that you're importing that you want to turn into new things. You want to break them down into small components and then build them back up into new things, right? So the process that digests those, those things that the cell is ingesting mm -hmm. depends upon that sulfate that it grabbed from outside the door. It stores it outside the door and then it grabs it, brings it into the lysosome, makes the lysosome work properly, and then reduces that sulfate at the very end back to hydrogen sulfide gas 
which releases that oxygen and supplies that to the mitochondria to make energy. So the whole thing is really cool. Oh god, this kind of sulfur yep. cycle that yeah. um, well, allows you to transport oxygen, break down cellular debris, produce ATP, all those good things. Sulfur is intimately connected in all of that, I believe. So, so people need to be soaking their feet or taking um, Epsom salt baths and or taking organic sulfur or, or something yes. like that. And, and um, because you're real familiar with the periodic chart and hopefully with fluoride as well, um, there's fluoride in our water um, it, it, with, with heat and other stuff. I mean, are we, I mean, is there a way to, to maybe minimize that as well? Like maybe borax or something to minimize the effects of uh, the Yeah, I, I, I would oh. recommend just trying to avoid it. Um, certainly don't use fluoride-based toothpaste. That's one thing you can do. Um, lobby I'm your local government. I'm, 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 people can't get away from it. They're yeah, I know. Fluoride yeah. is bad. It's very reactive. Uh, and of course, it competes with chloride and um, right. iodide. You know. I know. Our thyroids, I mean, it's like, it's, it's, yes. I mean, it's in all the, it's in, um, uh, um, what do you call it? Fire retardants. I mean, it's, it's in, it's everywhere. It's, yeah, it's in a lot of drugs too, you know. Oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I, know. Yeah, like, I think including statin drugs. Some yeah. of the statin drugs have flu fluorine in them. That is a, it's, it is a very, it's crazy. Drug. And, um, and it and of course putting it in the water is so insane and that's a whole story in itself because it's not even, it was it's not even fluoride. <laughs> I know it's a, it's this toxic form, which is a byproduct of the phosphate fertilizer industry. Right, the fertilizer. You know all of that, I guess. And, yeah, uh, yeah, no. And then they're like, the great solution is just to get poison everybody a little bit and hope that, and then pretend that it's good for them, right? That's in, the in solution. A, in, in a bunch of different areas, from our food to our water to our air to what's coming down from the sky. I mean, it's like it's all. It's amazing. And the whole, the whole. You know, we need to get past this whole concept that chemistry is good for us because it's not. I think. The chemical industry really needs to be banned. The entire industry needs to be banned. Well, I sometimes there, feel there needs to be some people like you um, overseeing it anyway. That that are looking for um, for for people's health rather than um, profit because that's yes. the problem. Um, I, I did want to talk a little bit just um, about your um, your friend's clothing um, because it's also organic clothing because it's in our clothing. And and um, and also because like polyesters and and nylons and stuff, those have plastics in them. And when we wash them, those get into the into the water too. So I mean, it's like I mean, and, and we're breathing potentially breathing those things. And and so to, so to get back to Mother Nature and back to organic, you know, living the way we you know clothing. Um, your your friend has so to. We want to talk a little bit about that. Yes, uh, Human Revolution Clothing, which is mm -hmm. a, a very tiny um, uh, new uh, startup. And uh, she's trying to um, create the message that we need to think about organic clothing as well as organic food. And uh, cotton, of course, is very toxic. It has, um, I, I always bought talk, uh, cotton clothing for my children um, mm -hmm. because that's natural, right? Right. But um, these days, kids have a lot of issues with eczema, you know, and I'm yeah. suspecting that it's the uh, cotton itself that could be irritating their skin mm -hmm. because it's BT cotton. And um, if they use a lot of toxic chemicals on the cotton, it, it's not subject to the same constraints that food uh, crops are, are subject to. So they can use more of everything on cotton, yeah. even though it actually is a food crop because they have cottonseed oil. Right. Yes. Which is probably extremely <laughs> toxic oil. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> It, yeah. it's probably, probably as bad as canola and soybean. Yes, and so the um, uh, cotton is, um, so organic cotton is something we need to think about, buying organic cotton clothing, particularly for the, for the children, for the infants. And um, yeah. um, this is something that I'd like to get people uh, to think about, to organic cotton as well as organic food. Let me see if I have any last questions for you, because um, this has been super helpful. And um, and it's also been. I mean, I just I I just need to do my part to make people aware, and 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 it's because the more of us that are out there, like the, the, your findings, the more of us that are out there, you know, sharing what you have found and and your partner, the the healthier we're all going, the more aware we're going to become, and the healthier we can become, and and um and that's that's really, uh, that's that's really what. I'm trying to do. Uh, to yes, it's so important. I just people yeah. need to understand that they have to almost pretend the food does not exist. Only the organic food. When they go shopping, yeah. if it doesn't say organic, don't buy it. And, and get from. You have to think, start thinking that way. 
and, and start fermenting your own food, growing your own food and fermenting meaning from, from organic stuff, because I don't know if you have glyphosate, if you ferment it, does it get worse? Yeah. Well, yeah. I would imagine that if you're lucky, the fermenters are going to actually clear the glyphosate. Because of the acetobacter, right? Cause yes. The and in fact, this is another thing my husband does is he makes, he puts the organic vegetables with a little wine and then he lets it sit and he turns it into, uh, um, you know, pickles, pickled vegetables. Yeah. And that's easy to do. Uh, I'm learning. I'm learning from him. <laughs> he's yeah, great. I mean, he's really, he really pays attention and he, he puts it right into action. You know, it's terrific. So. That's really good. Well, um, how can people get in contact with you or, or hear more about you, your, your website? And, and I'll put it underneath the, in the show notes. And yes. Yeah. There. My website, I have a, it's very dry. It just doesn't look very exciting. It's very techy, but it has a lot of information on it. It does. Various it's papers that I've published and various slide shows and various interviews. So there's a lot of stuff there. And you can also just, if you can remember my last name, luckily it's quite rare. S-E-N-E-F-F. Uh -huh. If you Google that, you can, you know, YouTube it, you can find uh, lots of interviews like this one and radio. I do a lot of uh, podcasts. Yes. I've done uh, slideshows that are, uh, that have been put up on the web. And so um, you did there's a lot of material. You did one in Colorado Springs. Um, recently. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And I just did one in, in Hartford, Connecticut with Don Huber. It was really great. Um, wow. Don Huber and myself and Lauren uh, Pang, who's a, uh, a pediatrician in Hawaii. And he's very upset with what's happening in Hawaii with the, oh. they're developing the new GMOs there and they have a lot of toxic chemicals they're using. And the people who live there have no clue what they're being exposed to because yeah. everything's secret. And it's just really tragic. Everybody's getting kids are getting sick and it's such a beautiful place and they're making it so it's awful. just awful because it is such a treasure and we're ruining it you know oh, with this it's yeah. just really sad i mean in our so, everything it's like everything that it's touching is just it's so pervasive it's just it, it's everywhere we need to go back to sustainable organic agriculture because there's the other problem is of course the soil is being destroyed yeah by the glyphosate and by everything else the whole chemical-based agriculture is destroying the soil and the soil is so crucial that's sort of to the plants, that's like their gut, you know, soil, yeah, back, yeah, soil microbes and yeah, gut microbes are kind of the same thing. And yeah. all of it's being messed up and it's huge consequences everywhere. And uh, we're going to reach a point of desperation once the soil is so depleted and everybody's so sick and, and the crops don't grow well because the soil is so sick, they become susceptible to fungus infection and things like that. So we're on a downward spiral. You, 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 you know, you have to think everything pro rather than anti. We, we think in terms of killing microbes, you know, it's, we need right. probiotics, not antibiotics. We need to right. think in terms of nourishing the microbes in the soil, in the gut, and bringing everything back to life. Um, humans can do that. You know, we have the brain capacity to turn this around. We just have to get our hearts into it and to realize how important it is. Yeah, we really do. So will you um, uh, check back with me on um, if you find out anything on the uh, on, on the corn husks? <laughs> I, I, I really I've been like really trying to find out information. On, it's not it, you know, it's not readily available. I mean, for a couple of years, I've and it's just like and yeah. um, it's not like I want to get any GMO corn. I don't really eat corn. Um, and so, um, and well, I mean, I, from the farmer's market because it's organic and I know the farmer. Yes. And, um, and so, and, and that burns, I tried it. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, you, you see the, the dirty dozen and the clean 15. I don't know if you've seen yeah. that on the web. Yes. yes. I think corn is one of the clean 15, which of course is a lie. So they're not looking at glyphosate. So you have to be careful with oh, that. I, I agree. It, with it doesn't, it doesn't pay any attention to glyphosate. So no, and, and that makes even like asparagus, I say you don't have you can, you can just eat asparagus, and I and I don't know whether that's sprayed or not. I've never really you know I've never checked, but I I just prefer to go organic as uh, as often. Absolutely, as I think the safest thing is just to do everything by policy organic. That's yeah. certainly what we do when we shop. Yeah. So I well, hope everybody listening will heed that message. Stephanie of MIT, most amazing woman that um, world renowned <laughs> for. <laughs> <laughs> Stay safe. Stay safe. I, I thank you. I, I always, um, I'm, I'm always sending you warm thoughts of, of love and, and protection. <laughs> thank <laughs> you. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> thank you for having me and thank you for doing yeah. this. Thank you, Stephanie. Have a great day. Bye bye. <laughs> thank you for listening to today's episode of the Wild and Free Healthy You podcast. Hope you learned something new. 
You can connect with me at LennyMotivates.com. You can also sign up for my newsletter and podcast notifications. 